Mm -hmm. We are talking space. The Peregrine spacecraft separated from its rockets just hours ago. It's beginning its slow journey to the lunar surface. So the launch this morning marks the first U.S. moon landing mission in more than 50 years. Joining me with more is Dan Riskin, CTV science and technology specialist. Great to have you on the show, Dan. Always a pleasure to talk about space, and what a great day. What a great day. Listen, there's been no U.S. moon landing missions uh, for 50 years, so why now? Yeah, Apollo 17, 1972. That's the last time the U.S. touched the lunar surface. And this is the first time the U.S. is going back since then, but it's also the first time a private company is landing on the moon. So this is the first uh, lander that is from a private company ever in the history of the moon. And so a lot of people are watching this very closely because it's part of this progression we're making from, you know, superpower governments doing the space race to private industry doing the space race. And really what marks the moon as sort of the target right now is that Artemis is coming up. And so there are plans to put humans on the moon. And uh, I think it's just a good idea to put a couple of landers up there that don't have humans in them uh, just to make sure everything's working OK before you take the stakes up a lot higher. So let's talk about Peregrine and what it's expected to do. It's going to be up there for 10 days before going dark. What is the plan? Yeah, so Peregrine doesn't have a lot of moving parts. I think once it lands, the antenna comes up, and that's about it. Uh, they've tried to keep it as simple as possible, but uh, it is a mission that uh, has a lot of significance in terms of uh, sort of almost spiritual significance in terms of going back to the moon. Uh, there are about 60 people who have their DNA in capsules on that spacecraft so that their remains or part of their remains will be on the moon forever. So that's a big deal. Many of whom were actors from the Star Trek series. And so th things like that really matter to people. They really help us connect to the space race and feel like it matters for the reasons that science fiction connects us to these things. Um, and then there are a couple of scientific instruments that are going to be you know, paying attention to the very, very thin atmosphere that exists at the moon and some of the nearby rocks. But for the most part, this is about sticking the landing near the South Pole and just showing that that technology is robust and not just the lander itself but also this is a brand new rocket and so making sure that rocket which seems to have already accomplished its mission uh, make sure making sure that rocket is also up to snuff yeah that's my next question dan about the vulcan center rocket uh, why is that so monumental itself well, first of all, it's got the coolest name ever, Vulcan Centaur Rocket. I mean, you've got a mashup of Star Trek and Greek mythology there, uh, Hercules, whatever you want. I love the name of this thing, and it, my kids feel the same way about it, so that's a good start. Um, this is built by the United Launch Alliance. They're the people that brought us the Delta rockets, the Atlas rockets, so they, they know what they're doing. But this is a brand new configuration, and this is the first certification flight for that new type of rocket. And with the success of this mission, they've got their eyes on the second certification mission, which is to take a cargo ship, a brand new kind of cargo ship called a Dream Chaser, looks a little bit like a miniature space shuttle. That is going to go on the nose of this uh, rocket in April and then go up to the International Space Station to deliver some cargo. And so uh, there are lots of plans for this rocket to become a regular part of how we get things up into the air. Uh, and so the fact that the launch went as well as it did this morning at 2.18 Eastern uh, is really a good sign. Dan, do you think the move from government control over our space missions to private industry just means that we will see so much more in space? Yeah, it, it, it shows that innovation is happening faster, that overall the price tag is lower. Uh, it does introduce some complexities. Uh, you can't control private industry the way you can ask governments to be responsible. So, for example, there's a lot of uh, noise right now about whether it's appropriate to put the remains of people on the moon when the moon is a spiritual place for a lot of communities around the world that, that uh, are not part of that space mission. And so these kinds of conversations where governments are involved, it's easier to sort of have a back and forth with private industry, as we've seen from Elon Musk in many different places, uh, private industry kind of does what it wants to do. So there are different sort of ramifications of this and a lot of conversations to be had. Dan, thank you. I'm sure we'll be talking to you more all about it. I hope so. Thanks a lot. Now hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.